Our thought for today is, life was much easier when apple and blackberry were just fruits. Today's November 10th, the feast day of the wonderful Pope Leo the Great. He was the first Pope ever to be called the Great. Since then, we've had Pope Gregory the Great, Pope Nicholas the Great, and now John Paul the Great. And the Pope Leo the Great was born about the year 400 in the region of Tuscany and was a deacon in the early church in Rome and then entrusted with the care of the poor. And he was such a great administrator and negotiator that he was sent by the, the emperor to Gaul, to modern day France in the year 440 to reconcile two rulers. And while he was away in France, he was elected Pope. So when he came back, he had this huge task the Roman Empire was crumbling, the city of Rome was crumbling at this time because of the invasion of the different barbarians like the Goths and the Vandals and others. And, and yet Pope Leo the Great truly showed his great skill at, uh, first of all, negotiation. We know that, he, that Attila the Hun, everybody has heard of Attila the Hun in the year 452, he had already sacked Italian cities and burned many cities, slaughtering populations, and he seized Milan and was now coming down towards Rome. The Emperor Valentinian sent the Pope to undergo negotiations with Attila the Hun, and they say they met up in the northern area near Lake Garda, and there met, and thanks be to God, perhaps because of the wisdom and negotiating skills, but also the holiness of St. Leo, Attila agreed not to sack and attack the city of Rome, perhaps to receive an annual tribute in its place. Some of the interesting traditions is that Attila the Hun saw a huge man with wearing robes holding a sword, sort of threatening Attila the Hun, and perhaps that was St. Michael the Archangel, we don't know. Uh, others wrote that Attila the Hun saw Saints Peter and Paul in the sky, warning Attila not to attack the city of Rome. We don't know exactly what happened, but we do know that the Pope saved Rome in the year 452 from being sacked and burned. Sadly, three years later, the Vandals would come into Rome, and again, the Pope was sent as a negotiator. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Vandals did not listen to the Pope. However, they did not burn the city and they did not massacre, massacre the populations. They just sacked the city and they did not destroy any of the basilicas. Again, perhaps because of the intercession and intervention of Pope Leo the Great. So besides being a great negotiator, he was also known for his Christology and writing the letter which is now known as the Tome of Leo that was read at the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451. This is when 600 bishops gathered at this council to discuss the, and to try to declare the nature and person of Christ. As we know from history, we had the Arian heresy which denied the divinity of Christ and the Nestorian heresies that denied his true humanity. And now we had them Monophysite heresy, which basically said that Christ only had one nature and his humanity was assumed into his divinity. And the Pope in his letter called the Tome of Leo was able to give us the clarification that no, Jesus Christ is one person, a divine person, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He is a divine person who has a human and divine nature united in the one person of Christ. So the authentic Orthodox teaching is that Christ is two natures, human and divine, truly God and truly man, truly divine, truly human, united in the one person of Christ. We call that the hypostatic union, and this helped to defeat the Monophysite heresy, and the Pope was able to clearly teach the teachings of, of the Holy Faith, and the congregation, all the bishops, having heard this, said, Peter has spoken through Leo. St. Peter has spoken through Leo. What a powerful thought that they really 
heard the voice of the successor of St. Peter. The Holy Father died on November 10th in the year 461. He's buried in St. Peter's in the Vatican. Again, such a great Pope of holiness and learning who helped to save the city of Rome and helped to clarify Catholic teachings on the true nature and the divinity of Christ. I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. Leo. We can pray for our neighboring parish of St. Leo's for their priests and all their parishioners on their great feast day of St. Leo the Great. Through the intercession of Pope St. Leo the Great, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.